From sketch to screen, I'll be sharing some of my favorite comic and webtoon tools that have transformed the way that I tell stories. Whether you're sketching out your first character or refining your 500 panel, there is something here for everyone. So let's dive into the world of webtoons as I'm giving you a behind the scenes tour of my comic creation process and explore these game changing tools you simply must know about. Welcome all new aspiring or professional comic creators. I'm Nadia Axel and today I'm thrilled to take you on a behind the scenes journey to show you my webtoon creation process. I have always loved creating comics, I've been drawing comics since I was wee years old and in recent years I've rediscovered my love for creating comics and telling stories. So I've done a lot of exploration and studying on comics and webtoons this year and last year not to mention drawing a lot myself, mostly on published works, for now. <laughs> if you're familiar here on my channel, you'll know that I'm a big fan and user of Clip Studio Paint. During my trip to Japan a few months ago, I was invited to come and visit their office in Tokyo. The team I met were so kind and funny, and it was very exciting for me to come and see the office where all of the magic happens. It was truly an inspiring experience. So of course I was happy when they asked me if I wanted to do a video highlighting my favorite webtoon tools in Clip Studio Paint. And here we are again. So let's jump behind the scenes into my webtoon creation process in Clip Studio Paint. The first thing I'll do when I start a new episode is I create a new webtoon canvas. And these are the dimensions that I like to start out with. Because I have upgraded to Clip Studio Paint X, I have these page settings available as well that will allow me to create a multi-page file. It basically means that Clip Studio Paint will create a project file where it collects and stores multiple pages. Without a multi-page file, I can still create a webtoon canvas, but I would have to create all of the files separately. But this feature is super handy when it's time to export for upload as well, as I'll show you when I'm ready to export. The multi-page feature is actually pretty amazing because it keeps my entire episode collected in this kind of overview and I can at any time add more pages to my file or adjust the size of my existing pages and I can access all of my pages from a single file. And now that I've created my file, I can click into one of these thumbnails and start sketching my webtoon episode. And usually I have some kind of storyboard or script to follow that I've prepared beforehand, like the one you will see right here. When I sketch a webtoon episode, there are a few things I like to keep in mind, such as the placement of the speech bubbles and the balance between art and speech, as well as the transitions. So, to make sure the flow of the episode looks right, I use the smartphone connection feature in Clip Studio Paint to put my phone into companion mode to preview my episode directly on my smartphone. I continue working on my tablet because the preview updates live as I work. It's a super neat little feature and it's free to use with Clip Studio Paint. One thing I especially love about the vertical scroll format of webtoons is that it allows you whole new ways to create drama and pacing. It's generally a very playful format and I like to exploit that by playing with panel formatting, text effects and images that forces the reader to scroll away through an evolving series of events in a single panel. Because what's better than some juicy drama, am I right? <laughs> okay, when I'm done sketching, I'm ready to add the panels. I use Clip Studio Paint's frame tool to create my panels. This is an amazing tool that I use for all of my comics that lets me set boundaries for my panels so that their content stays inside of the frame. I already made sure that my speech bubbles flow nicely using the preview and I like to add my dialogue early, so that's the next step for me here. I use the balloon tool to create my standard speech bubbles. Sometimes I like to draw the bubbles myself because I think it just adds a little bit of character, but I also often download and use balloon assets. There are some speech bubbles with unique effects and styling that I like to use for different kinds of speak or characters. When it comes to fonts for webtoons, I like to use Anime Ace 3 for dialogue and Lafayette Comic Pro for the effects. I'll use the webtoon preview on my smartphone once again to check if the font size is nice and readable. Sometimes if I need to add some dialogue without showing any artwork, I like to add like these little character markers to let my readers know who is currently speaking. This is a great way to convey a lot of dialogue without confusing your readers. To ink my work, I almost always use my main brush here. 
If you want to use or try out this brush for yourself, just visit Clip Studio Assets, search for brushes and click popular. It's literally the first one on the list, but I've also put the direct link in the description below. I really like inking, don't get me wrong, but even line art can get very tedious for me when I have so many panels to do. But luckily for me, Clip Studio Paint also has one of the best time-saving tools for inking when you combine it with the use of 3D models. Take this balcony for instance. It's a 3D model and I can cheat a bit so I don't have to redraw the lines of this model. This feature is a Clip Studio Paint X feature, but it is super handy and I love it. I select the layer of my 3D object, open the layer menu and click convert to lines and tones. There are a lot of different settings here and it will mostly depend on the specific 3D model I'm using, but here are my settings right now. Then I hit OK and now Clip Studio Paint has extracted the lines from the 3D object and I don't have to ink the entire thing myself. I can just add and remove some line work here and there and it's done. Speaking of saving time, you can find just about everything in Clip Studio Assets to help speed up your workflow. Skirt references, patterns, textures and brushes for clothing, shoes, backgrounds, color palettes. Seriously, I could go on for an hour. Materials uploaded to Clip Studio Assets are, by the way, cleared for commercial use, so materials downloaded from this platform can be used freely in all of your projects. And I like to organize my assets according to my projects. I have a folder and subfolders for my individual projects in my material tab so I can quickly access and use them. Everything from my character's body types, their smartphones, accessories, colors and patterns, etc. And I can upload the materials I made myself, such as body types or poses, to the cloud so I can access them no matter what tablet I'm using, as long as I'm logged into my Clip Studio account. I feel like there's almost nothing I can't do in Clip Studio Paint. Oh, you want to mix colors to create a new palette? Try the super realistic color mixer. I saw you wasting time in drawing lace by hand. Here's a gorgeous lace brush. And here's 20 more. Ah, so you need help seeing the face from a specific angle. He has a freaking customizable 3D head. You're welcome. It's like Clip Studio Paint is the digital equivalent to work smarter, not harder. Still while having loads of fun, of course, and without compromising the quality of your art. When it comes to comics, coloring is super time consuming for me, so I'm jumping all of the shortcuts that I can. Clip Studio Paint's fill tool is amazingly efficient and makes coloring fun instead of a chore for me. I love this tool so much that I made an entire video on the fill tool if you want to learn how to master it and speed up your workflow. The link is in the description. And to make sure I have cohesive colors throughout my story, I create custom color sets for my projects as well. I can add or remove colors to my set or even name the colors so they're easy to find. So with a simple click from this panel here, I can pick the colors I need and I know they're going to be the same each time. When it comes to webtoons, I like to keep my shading to a minimum to save myself some precious time. So I usually go with very few overall shadow and highlight tones and I'll usually just use blending modes to add the few that I use. This way my panels will also appear much more effectful for those few times I actually do add full rendering for a much more dramatic effect. And in terms of the typical shading I'll do, I usually concentrate the shading on the characters' faces, especially on the close-ups. To shade with, I use a mix of the soft airbrush, my main brush I told you about before, and the default transparent watercolor brush for blending. Coloring the comics is definitely the most time-consuming part of creating an episode, and for an episode of this size, it will approximately take me two full days to color everything in. I've used Clip Studio Paint for a few years now, and it has become an indispensable part of my work. What I like so much about Clip Studio Paint is that you can really feel that it's an app designed for artists to give us the freedom and the tools we need to be creative and passionate about our work. Clip Studio Paint has so many tools and features that even after a few years, I still keep discovering new things, even apart from the new features that are constantly added. To me, it makes it so much more exciting to explore the interface while I work, and that's one of the things that I find most fun about Clip Studio Paint. The reason that I create art, and the reason I've chosen art as my livelihood, is because it allows me to explore the stories and the characters that live inside of me. When I bring them to life through my art, whether it's comics or illustrations, it's like I get to be part of them. 
I know it sounds really corny, but I bet some of you know exactly what this feeling is that I'm talking about. It's this journey of being part of these stories that fuel my creativity and motivates me to draw. And before you ask where you can read this webtoon, you actually can't. <laughs> um, this episode is from a story I have many bits and pieces of living rent-free in my head at the moment. It's a dramatic love story, obviously, about a girl who buys this ominous old mirror that, as it turns out, lets her travel to an identical mirror inside this giant old castle in the middle of frigging nowhere where a demon lord lives in solitude because he's being punished for a crime that he committed many, many years ago. And that's kind of where it all starts. The rest of the story is just bits and pieces of scenes in my head, but I really enjoyed finally getting to draw a scene from this story. Anyway, I'm adding the text effects here right towards the end of the process. When I think the episode is complete, I take one last preview of it on my phone to check if everything looks good. And when I'm happy with my episode, it's time to export it. I use Clip Studio Paint's export webtoon feature because it automatically slices the files seamlessly. I know that on webtoons platform, the standard image size is 800 by 1280 pixels. So I simply put in those settings here and Clip Studio Paint will now automatically slice and export my webtoon sequentially so it's ready to upload. And here's a little treat for you all. When you're uploading a new episode on Webtoon, you can actually upload directly from Clip Studio Paint. Just pick your Clip Studio Paint file and let the magic happen. And as an extra little treat for you all, Clip Studio Paint version 3.0 just released today and it comes with some cool new features. I had the opportunity to check out the new features in a beta version and I wanted to share three of the new features that I'm personally super excited about. So first, Clip Studio Paint now has layer comps. You can use layer comps to create and save different layer compositions so that you can easily switch between them anytime. Clip Studio Paint now also has a color match feature. Select any layer and choose a reference image that Clip Studio Paint will color match your layer with. And lastly, you can now add a chromatic aberration filter directly onto your layer instead of having to create it yourself. It is a rather small addition, but I really like it because it does save me some precious time. Version 3.0 is available now. You can follow the link in the description below if you want to learn more about version 3.0 and the new features. I feel like Clip Studio Paint not only supports, but furthermore embraces all aspects of my creative process. It doesn't matter if I'm doing illustrations, comics for print, webtoon, or the occasional animation projects. Clip Studio Paint is my go-to app every time, no matter where I am or what I'm currently working on. And if you haven't tried Clip Studio Paint yet, I'd say it's about damn time that you check out their free trial. But be advised, once you've had a taste of it, there is no turning back. Not for me, at least. <laughs> if you ask me, Clip Studio Paint is the best drawing app for digital artists. It's as simple as that. And honestly, sponsored or not, Clip Studio Paint is my personal recommendation to other artists. Clip Studio Paint really stands out for me because it evolves with the art community, staying on beat, developing tools tailored for artists. What also really sets it apart from other apps is its community. Most of the assets available are created by other artists and the tip website is a gold mine of tutorials and advice, all thanks to the contribution of fellow Clip Studio Paint users. All right, thank you for watching this video, guys. I know it's a very short time to go over such a comprehensive topic, but I really hope that you found something on the way that you can use for yourself, either as inspiration or new tools. Now go out there and create yourself some amazing, dramatic stories. And thanks once again for Clip Studio Paint for, well, not only inviting me to the office and meeting with the crew, but also for the continued support of my channel. Until next time, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>